Okay, play the footage. Oh, wait, you're the... Right, so... Hey, I'm the Mule, and welcome to this video. A series of shorter form videos I'll be doing on a number of games. Starting off with Noita. Noita is an action roguelite 2D platformer created by Nola Games. It was released in October of 2020 to generally good reviews. What's special about it is that the game's areas are procedurally generated and every pixel in the world is simulated. Which really is why we're talking about it and what makes this game stand out from its contemporaries. Because of how that facilitates emergent gameplay. Emergence is a term that refers to mechanics that change in accordance with the player's actions. Noita features more ways to interact with its world than I care to list for you, but there are a select few fairly rigid constants that reoccur on every playthrough. That is where you start your journey, it always begins here on top of the world at the mouth of the mountain. And secondly are the biomes that the player has to venture through. These biomes will be inhabited with power-ups, environmental objects, simulations, and autonomous agents. And to get to the third and final constant, the final boss, and the ending that follows, you have to venture through and conquer all these biomes. That's the goal of the game. Or, well, that's uh, simplifying it a bit. Um, saying the goal is to reach the bottom is like saying the point of life is dying. It's a gross simplification, it's not about reaching the end. That description of the game doesn't really explain at all what it's about. Because the real meat of the game is in the journey that the player carves for themselves, fighting their way to the ending. That's where the fun is found. Right there in interacting with the game's systems, poking at it, learning how it responds, and through iteration, slowly, with small increments, learning how to respond back to traverse this world. This is what makes Noita the emergent juggernaut that it is. Large parts of the environments are algorithmically generated. That's in addition to the items, enemies, traps, and even the environments themselves that interact in a rich variety of ways. This world is always at the brink to blow up. Everywhere you look are potential reactions that just need a little push to get going. You could think of it like the world having thousands of unstable pockets that are just short of reaching critical mass, and you are the catalyst that sets everything off. But all these kind of local unplanned decisions all add up into this larger macro unit that does have a distinct personality. That's emergence. Emergent gameplay includes a lot of relatively simple decisions that the player must make that ends up leading to more complex outcomes. Two or more or several mechanics working together to create a dynamic. An example of this could be you arrive at the holy mountain and come across a new power-up. So the player can tinker with wants to change their properties. We'll call that mechanic one. The power-up that the player found added electricity to the one's spells. Mechanic two is that there are elemental modifiers that can be added to wands. When shooting with this wand into water, it sends an electric pulse through the water. Therefore, mechanic three is that electricity flows through water and other liquids. So, what the player can do if they have an electric weapon and see an enemy in a conductive liquid is to shoot the liquid to electrocute them. This creates Dynamic 1. It lets players electrocute enemies in liquids, allowing the player to damage potentially several enemies at once with one attack and forego having to aim at the enemy to damage it, instead only the liquid needs to be shot for the damaging effect to take place. Mechanics are the rules of the game. They are mixed to create emergent behaviors. That creates a dynamic, which are real-time interactions between the mechanics at play. It is where the emergence happens. Then there's a last step after the dynamic, called aesthetic. Those are the emotional responses from the player. Having a wide exploration space lets the player improvise to many different situations, to create their own solutions, instead of just following a trail of breadcrumbs left for the player. And this is where this stuff gets really interesting. 
because these emergent mechanics unfold like a story in the player's mind following Freytag's pyramid. Okay, so it goes like this. Everything starts with the player being shown a new game mechanic. Interactions with that mechanic is shown to be more complex than first thought. Then the player is asked to solve the most complex situation that can be created with that single mechanic in mind, followed by the mechanic then later being combined with already known mechanics in easy to resolve ways. And finally, with the mechanic mastered, it becomes a regular part of new and more complex puzzles. In a linear game, pretty much any mechanic is introduced in this manner. But in Noita and other emergent games, the player takes the reins and learns it themselves in a form of narrative emergence. When this is executed properly, the player experiences a living, breathing universe around them that doesn't adhere to them, but to itself. Although this world may not exist outside of us, when this design is successful, it feels like it continues on without us. Through successful implementation of narrative emergence, we are no longer the center of the universe, and with that freedom comes the opportunity to truly explore a game, not just through its scripted options, but through reader response. And that's the power of emergence.